Hello and welcome to the mini lecture on selecting and narrowing speech topics. Uh, today we'll be discussing the process of how to select a topic and how to narrow the topic down so it meets the needs of the audience and the speaking situation. Now in your first speeches I've assigned you a topic, but what if you had to select a topic on your own? What makes a good speech? Well the answer to this is an interesting topic. So who does it have to be interesting for? Well, the speaker and the audience. It also has to be appropriate for the speaking situation. Your text calls this the rhetorical situation. We always have to keep in mind the, the speaking occasion, where we're speaking, uh, who we're speaking to, the audience, and the goal that we have in mind for us, the speaker. Now, getting back to the topic, if the topic is interesting to you, that is if you have a passion for it, then this will come across to the audience. The topic you should select should also be uh, interesting and appropriate for your audience. And how do we discover this? Through the process of audience analysis, which is the topic for our next mini lecture, uh, and so I don't want to jump ahead. But even without audience analysis, there are some basic topics that are interesting to audiences. That is, topics that meet unmet needs. Now we've discovered this un term unmet needs using Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is a model some of you might be familiar with. Basically what Maslow was saying is that everybody has some unmet need, whether it's food or safety or shelter or love or self-esteem, and it's different to everybody. If I'm uh, living in a box down by the river, I'm concerned about whether I'm going to get through the night and I have shel shelter and safety. Uh, I might be concerned with love or self-esteem or being accepted by my peers. Now, advertisers do a really great job of tapping into unmet needs and sometimes even creating unmet needs um, using um, commercials. Uh, I think of uh, you know the Coors Light commercial. Um, if you drink Coors Light, you're going to be really cool and hip, and young bikini girls will hang around you. Or if you use Listerine breath strips, next time you run into a cute guy in the elevator, uh, he's going to think you're attractive and you get to go out with him. So unmet needs um, are certainly important in terms of determining uh, whether a topic is interesting uh, to your audience. Uh, where do you find speech topics? Well, they're all over the place. Uh, they're in the news, uh, the internet, uh, pop culture, even in your head. Um, I think of uh, something in pop culture that's been kind of interesting to me. It's getting a little long in the tooth now, but I still find it fascinating. The story of the crazy lady astronaut. And you may have heard of this. Uh, this is a lady astronaut who's based in Houston, Texas. And she has a boyfriend in the astronaut corps in Florida, and she discovers he's having a relationship with another lady astronaut in Florida. And, of course, she wants to have a conversation with him about this. So she gets in her car, and she's going to go hell-bent for leather from Houston, Texas, all the way to Florida without stopping. Uh, she even goes to the extent that she's going to put on some adult diapers. Uh, now, this story is interesting uh, for lots of reasons. Uh, it appeals to sex and, and, and drama and uh, love and intrigue and the human uh, condition. Uh, by the way, they ended this story with the lady, fortunately for her, getting pulled over somewhere in Florida. And it was read like a game of Clue, the things that she had in her trunk. She had the lead pipe. Uh, she had the duct tape. Uh, she had some uh, cellophane. She was going to have a conversation with this guy uh, somewhere in the Everglades, and he wasn't coming back. So fortunately uh, for, uh, for him, uh, he, uh, she, was, uh, she was pulled over. Anyway, an, an interesting uh, topic that just exists out there in the public sphere. Um, inside of your head is another interesting place to find speech topics. you got a lot of stuff going on there you don't even know that's rattling around. So how do you find it? Well, brainstorming is a process that we're all familiar with probably from writing. That is just spitting out everything that's in your head on a piece of paper. Uh, I, I say take the next level, write, write it down on a piece of paper, and then select maybe the top five and ask yourself specifically why are these speech topics interesting. Now your book uses the term creating a list and then expanding the list or the inventory to ask yourself why does it appeal to a particular audience. Another way that you can go about um, discovering speech topics is concept mapping or webbing. Now concept mapping or webbing you might be familiar with from writing also. That is where you put a general topic up on the, on the board or a piece of paper in, in the middle with a circle around it and then you start to draw lines off to the side about things that are related to that particular topic. Maybe the topic of travel is one that we might look at. We might look at all sorts of things about travel, difficulties with travel, expenses of travel, 
Uh, however we want to explore the relationships with this topic, it helps us uh, to develop it in a visual fashion rather than a list. And some people really like working um, with a, a concept map. Um, but just as with the concept map, one of the things we want to ask ourselves is why is this interesting to the audience? We always want to keep the audience in mind. So now you've gone through both your brainstorming and created your lists and asked yourself if they're interesting and gone through the concept map, it's time to start writing, correct? Well, no, because we have to go ahead and narrow down the topic so that it's manageable and it meets the needs of the rhetorical situation. When I say manageable, you might be given, a, like in this class, say five to seven minutes to give a speech, and you don't want to give a 15-minute speech or else you get the Big Bugs Bunny theatrical hook or, you know, playing the music like they do at the Academy Awards, and you don't want to be run off stage like that. So you want, you want to always keep in mind uh, the constraints of the, of the speaking situation, um, some, some of which are, are time. Um, so let's think about the narrowing process. When we're narrowing a topic down to meet the needs of the rhetorical situation, think of it almost if those of you who do uh, artwork or pottery you have a big lump of clay, which is your raw material, and you're narrowing it down ultimately to get a fine piece of, uh, of pottery, a cup or a plate or whatever you decide to do. But it doesn't start out that way. It starts out as, as raw material. So in your speech, you start out with a general topic. Uh, either from your list or your concept map, and then you narrow it down. Uh, the concept map is, is, is a useful tool for, for narrowing thing, uh, things down, but so is another thing called a funnel or the mold method, which is basically an inverted uh, a pyramid, with the top being the broad base and being the most general, and the bottom being uh, the narrow, narrower aspect, and um, that will end up as your thesis statement. Um, so we, uh, we start by identifying the topic. It has f five levels. We identify the topic. Uh, we narrow the topic down to a topic area. We decide what our general purpose is. We decide on a specific purpose. And then we come up with a thesis statement. So let's just run through uh, these uh, one, one through five. Um, the topic area, or, um, or the topic in this case, is travel. Let's just use that example. That's the general topic. And we want to narrow it down a bit. Um, to, let's say, difficulties in mo modern travel. And based upon what we know about our audience, we want to come up with a goal, whether to inform or persuade or even entertain. Maybe we decide we want to inform our audience about the difficulties related to modern uh, uh, travel. We want to come up with, next with what's called a specific purpose statement. And the specific purpose statement is expressed um, with a single phrase uh, that identifies precisely what you hope to accomplish in your speech. It contains goal language. Uh, for example, to inform my audience about how to avoid the pitfalls of modern uh, air travel. Next, we want to come up with uh, our thesis statement. And the difference between a thesis statement and uh, a specific purpose statement is the difference between goal language and action language. In the specific purpose statement, you're saying what you hope to accomplish. And in the thesis statement, you're going to say actually what you're going to do. Um, for example, um, the thesis statement in this might be, there are five easy steps to ensure that you have a trouble-free flight to your vacation destination. Now, a lot of people actually like to stop at the specific purpose statement because it's pretty narrow, and you can start to write from there. And you might even come back and just recraft your thesis statement at, at the end. Everybody's a little bit different about that, but as long as you get down to the specific purpose statement, you have narrowed it down to meet the needs of the situation, you have a goal, and you have a specific goal, and you can start writing. So uh, now that you've gone through uh, the concept map and the funnel or mold method, it's time to start writing your, your speech. So just to recap what we've discussed today, uh, first we discussed some ways to select a topic, including what makes a topic interesting, and then we've discussed the importance of narrowing down a topic to meet the needs of, uh, meet the, needs of the rhetorical situation. Now, for our next, uh, next mini-lecture, we're going to be looking at the process of audience analysis. Uh, see you then.